This video will review mixing an IV push medication. Uh, so I'm gonna do my first check here and also review my PDM to make sure that I, as a student nurse, can give this medication, which is Miropenem, so verifying the name, and also turning to my MAR, make sure that I have the order for Miropenem 500 milligrams. It has not been given, it's IV, it is due now, and it's for Parsio Parsons. So just verifying Miropenem, yes, yes, okay. I'm looking at the correct PDM and I can give it as a student nurse. I'm also going to check the dosage to make sure that the uh, ordered dosage falls within the required uh, usual dosage. Um, if it's over or under, we may want to check with our healthcare team to make sure that they intentionally underdosed or overdosed based on maybe patient's body size or maybe uh, renal clearance, liver clearance, all those sorts of uh, factors. Uh, so 500 milligrams does fall within my usual dosage, so that's perfect. And I also just want to make sure I'm not exceeding my single dose or exceeding my maximum daily dose, and both of those are okay. Um, I also do want to see how I can give this medication. So for Miropenem, I can actually give it intermittent or IV push. So the choice is completely mine. I could make it in a mini bag if I wanted to, or I could give it IV push. I'm going to say that the patient has a lot of IV antibiotics, um, and so I just don't have time to run a mini bag over, you know, 15 or 30 minutes. I want to give this IV push so I can give it over three to five minutes, and my PDM will specify how fast I can give it. Um, so I would also look to see how I'm going to mix this medication. Uh, and I can see 500 milligrams. I'm going to add sterile water, 10 mLs, and it'll give me a final concentration. And since my dosage is 500 milligrams, and this is a 500 milligram vial, I know I can get my full dosage from here. Okay. If I had a one gram uh, vial, I wouldn't need the whole vial. I would only need half. Okay. Um, if I had a um, yeah, 750 milligram dosage, I would have to get more than this bottle since it's only got 500. So you'd have to grab a second vial, okay? Um, the other things I can take a look at as well, Compatibility isn't a concern because there's no running infusion. The patient has a peripheral IV lock. I could also take a look at the potential hazards as well. So for my patient education and also as well as informing myself of what to be aware of. All right, so I'll do my hand hygiene. Okay, I did my first check. I compared it to my PDM as I pulled it out of the Pixis. Okay, and I'm going to swab the top. 30 seconds, dry for 15. And I'm going to pe banana peel my syringe. And I'm picking an appropriate size syringe. So let's see, I'm going to need 10 ml. So you could pick a 10 ml syringe. You could use a 20 ml syringe as well. Uh, either would be fine. Okay. And then we have our, oh, this is a filtered blunt fill needle. I don't need a filtered blunt fill needle because there's no uh, glass particles. It's not an ampule. So I'm actually going to go to my supply and find my blunt fill regular needle. I'm gonna attach that. Okay, oh, and the other thing I'll need to do too is swab the other top. So I'm gonna grab another alcohol swab. Swab the top there, 30 seconds, dry for 15. And I'm going to instill 10 ml of air. Okay, if you get too much pressure, don't push it because the top can fly off. Just stop pushing in the air and then allow it to fill. So it's going to equalize the pressure. It's going to pull back on that sterile water. You can keep pulling back and then you can add a bit more air. Be just a little more than 10 mLs. Scoop and swoop there. And then we're going to tap out the bubbles. There we go. Good. And then we're going to make exactly 10 mLs of our sterile water. Um, Let's see, that's sterile water. And notice it was sterile water, not normal saline. Our PDM said uh, sterile water it had to be. Okay. Now we've already swabbed the top for our Miropenem. So now I'm gonna instill the 10 mLs into there. And now I'm gonna release the pressure so that it doesn't spray back at me when I pull this needle out. 
pull that needle out. Scoop and swoop. And then we're going to rotate that. We're waiting for it to dissolve. Okay, and other things we'd want to check about this vial as well is to make sure that it's not expired. So that we're doing the reconstitution portion. Okay. And then if I needed to do a calculation, uh, I would do my calculation now. So the concentration in this vial, my PDM tells me it's 50 milligrams per ml. I need 500 milligrams, so I'm going to need the whole vial, the 10 mls, the whole 10 mls. Okay, so I'm going to take another alcohol swab here. And because I might have contaminated it with my hands while I was swirling it. Okay. And we're going to take our syringe and you can use the same one or again, you can use a 20 ml syringe. That's fine. Okay. And we're going to instill our air. Okay. And making sure that the needle is within the fluid so it can pull back all of that IV medication. And to make sure that you get the last little bit there, just keep pulling your needle closer and closer to the edge so that you could try to get all of that fluid that's sitting at the cap there, okay? Now, one thing about the lab is the medication that is inside here, the powder, is not actually medication. It's a fake powder, okay? It's not like a fake medication. So in clinical, it would puff up. The medication would puff up when it's added with sterile water and normal saline, so then the volume would be greater. In the lab, it doesn't puff up because it's not real medication. So sometimes what you're going to find is you're not going to get the full amount that you require in the lab because it's not pretending to puff up, okay? So that's okay. So if I'm just shy of 10 mLs, that's all right. Just verbalize, I should get 10 mLs from this vial, but because it's a lab scenario, I'm uh, going to pretend I have 10 mLs, okay? Again, we would just want to make sure we get all of those bubbles out, okay? Because we don't want to inject that into our patient, okay? And then also, too, we don't want to go to the bedside with this blunt fill needle. So we're going to take it off and we're going to put on a blue cap. Okay, so taken from the package, we're going to sterilely put on a blue cap. Make sure we get all those air bubbles out there. There we go. Okay. Now we can uh, label this medication as well. So I filled out my label. And then this would be a great time to do our second check. So with my syringe in hand, also with my vial, I'm going to take a look at my PDM and also my MAR. So my MAR, Miropenem, Miropenem, that's what I have here. I have 500 milligrams, 500 milligrams. It is IV, it is due now, and it is for partial Parsons. So I have done my checks here. I'm also gonna take a look at my syringe and my PDM and make sure that I have reconstituted this correctly. It was a 500 milligram vial, so I needed 10 mLs of sterile water. And so that gave me 50 milligrams per mL and I needed the whole dosage for my 500 milligrams, so that's what I have in my syringe. I have 10 mLs in here, um, and that's all I need to do. I do not need to dilute it any farther because I can give it undiluted over three to five minutes. That's under the IV push um, criteria there. Okay, so I'm gonna fix my label. Also important to notice as well, how fast can I give this? So we're gonna take a look at over three to five minutes. So we're gonna to have to do a bit of a calculation there. So I calculated I have 10 mLs. I'm gonna give it over five minutes. Because this patient has not had this medication before, I'm gonna give it nice and slow so I can watch for any reactions. If they had this medication before, I might wanna give it a bit faster, over three minutes. So it's completely up to you. You'll probably need your calculator to help you uh, figure out how fast to push the medication. So when I calculate that out, my 10 mLs over five minutes, it equates to two mLs over one minute. If I wanna break that down even farther for my pause time of say 30 seconds, I can give one mL every 30 seconds. You could break it down even farther if you want, 0.5 mLs every 15 seconds. It's completely up to you how long you wanna pause for, 